So today I want to talk about the three most overlooked aspects of bass fishing. The three most overlooked things, the things that everybody misses that can be the difference of catching fish and not catching fish. And so yeah, that's what we're going to be talking about today. But before we get into all that, thank you guys for taking time out of your busy day, your busy week to come hang out with me, get those bugs off my face. And to watch this video. For you guys that don't know me, my name is Alex Rudd, the Alex Rudd Fishing Channel. I do bass fishing stuff around here. So if you're into that, hit that subscribe button, all that kind of stuff. Obviously, you clicked on this video out of curiosity. You're like, what is this big bearded man talking about? Well, what we're going to be talking about, like I just said, is the three most missed things in bass fishing. These three aspects of bass fishing, everybody just kind of, I think, glances right over. And these could be the difference between catching fish and not catching fish. So number one, bottom composition what is the bottom made out of because if you can figure out what the bottom is made out of then you can start to figure out the pattern you can start putting the pieces of the puzzle together to catching more fish because i have seen times that the bass are on clay banks i've seen the times that they're on slate banks i've seen times when they're on pea gravel i've seen times when they're on chunk rock i've seen times when they're on river rock rather than big man-made rock and i've seen times that they're on big man-made rock rather than sand or they're on sand rather than big man-made rock or they're on a combination they're on you know pea gravel mixed in with mud and or big stones mixed in with sand bottom composition is absolutely huge in bass fishing because if you know what the bottom composition is then you can start again to piece together the puzzles of what those fish are doing great example of this is the other day i am fishing found a school of fish bottom composition was key because what i found was an isolated rock patch with an isolated grass patch on it and so that rock created a hard spot for those fish to orient to as well as that grass created a hard line for those fish to orient to and to ambush out of and those two different kinds of bottom compositions coming together was what was holding those fish there along with some other factors that we're about to talk about but bottom composition can be so huge i think that's one of the big things that a lot of people miss and i talk about it a lot more in the winter um, in the spring when i really start cranking a whole lot i mean there are days that the fish are just orienting to a certain type of rock and it could be for a bunch of different reasons one of the biggest reasons that i've found is they orient to darker rock during the winter because the darker rock is what warms up first and these bass having a cold-blooded system having a metabolism that's slower when they cold they have to sun they have to warm up and so they're gonna go get on the thing that warms up the fastest which oftentimes that's the black or, or darker rock we black slate is the big one for us around here but it's that darker rock it's a certain type of bottom composition same thing for clay banks clay muddy water is going to warm up a lot faster than clear water does and so there are days in the winter in the fall in the spring when they're on that clay mud that's mixed with some of that dark slate mud that that's the kind of bottom composition they want to be on because it warms up faster there's a bunch of different you know reasons why fish orient to certain types of bottom composition that we could just dive into and literally do a whole series about why you know they relate to those different kinds of bottom composition but pay attention to that if you get a bite i think oftentimes too many people get wrapped up in getting the fish into the boat and they don't pick apart the key details of why that fish bit for me one of the things that i do is i catch that fish I get them into the boat and then if you watch me i'm scanning the bank i'm trying to figure out why was that fish there what was that fish on what was holding that fish what's the bottom composition all the different factors that are playing into why that fish is there you know the lures we talk about lures all the time i give you guys tips and tricks about lures and the lures to pick and all that stuff all the time but if you don't match that up with the other factors like bottom composition it just isn't going to be super effective the second big thing is current current is king in bass fishing i don't care what anybody says current is king the three things that every bass fisherman needs to look for is current current and more current if you find moving water and that could be moving water that's coming out of a creek that could be man-made moving water that's coming out of a dam that could be natural moving water that's coming from the wind blowing onto a bank it could be man-made current that is being funneled down under a dock or a bridge pylon if you can find the current you will find the bass a bass inherently is a predator 
And a predator is inherently sort of lazy. And the reason for that is, is they don't want to have to work for their food. They want their food to come to them. Oftentimes lions in the wild and many other big cats will lay in wait until the prey comes to them and then they'll ambush them. A bass is the same way. If there's an opportunity for a bass to sit in an eddy where current is being pushed around something and they can just sit there and they can ambush something when it comes floating by or comes swimming by, that's the opportunity that they're going to want to take. Current is huge. Again, going back to that story that I just told you guys a few minutes ago, not only was there rock and grass there that created two defined edges for those bass to orient to, but there was also current pushing down that bank from two different sources. I had a crank that was dumping in, it was dumping current in, and then I had wind blowing into that bank as well. So those bait fish were being forced into that area and so those bass were sitting in that area taking the opportunity to ambush those fish and not have to expend a bunch of energy by using the current to their advantage and even though a bass's brain is about that big they're hardwired to do a couple of things one of them's make babies one of them swim and then one of them is eat everything that it can get its mouth on and so when the wind started blowing into that bank with that current pushing down through there with that defined edge and that certain bottom composition that those fish wanted it made all the difference in the world and it made those fish want to stay in that place and want to eat and so the second biggest thing that i think so many people miss in bass fishing is the current number three number three is going to be the amount of sunlight that a bass is exposed to and really the amount of sunlight that the surface of the earth is exposed to i think the single biggest factor that plays into why bass do what they do is the amount of sunlight that they see now if you look at nature as a whole i don't care if you're into deer hunting if you're into turkey hunting if you're into bird hunting if you're into coon hunting if you're into whatever it is whatever puts you outside and, and makes you or puts you in a opportunity where you can observe nature the single biggest factor that drives a lot of what all those different animals do is the amount of sunlight that they get or lack thereof sunlight is the single biggest driving factor in the world that we live in the sun is what is going to warm up the surface of the earth or the lack of sun is what's going to cool down the surface of the earth the amount of sunlight that we get is going to dictate what the plants do around us whether the grass grows or whether it doesn't it dictates the weather that we experience every single day it dictates the climate that we experience over a long period of time it dictates what we do on a day-to-day -day basis because if it's 98 degrees and hot outside those are the days that you don't want to be outside but it if it is a perfect 70 degrees and zero humidity those are the days that you want to be outside the sun drives all of that all of our weather all of our day-to-day -day life experiences with that weather and then the overall climate over a long period of time is driven by the sun and i think one thing that so many people just glance right over or pass right by and they want to attribute all these different factors to bass fishing to the sun is the most under utilized tool that we have now on the flip side of that you have the moon and the moon plays as big of a factor as the sun does because the moon is a direct result of the sun the sun drives what the moon does as well obviously how the sun is oriented to the earth and cast a shadow blah 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 right lunar cycles yes but it's all driven by the sun the sun is what makes all that happen and i truly believe that bass feed on daylight they feed on moonlight they feed on the amount of light that they are exposed to and the reason i say that is like what i talked about earlier the bottom composition some bottom compositions warm up faster than others why because of the sun certain pieces of cover are more valuable throughout the day why because of the kind of sun light that a bank is getting or the way the shadows are being cast on a certain bank or the way that the bass can use that to get out of the sun the sun is driving all the factors that we talked about before as well as the factor that we're talking about now which is the sun the sun is the single biggest driving factor in what a bass does so understanding how the sun affects animals and affects nature and affects bass i think is super super important because here's the deal with the bass a bass's brain 
is over 90% dedicated to its sight. Its entire world is driven by what it can see. And what it can see is going to be dependent on how much light penetration and how much exposure to light that that bass has. And so as the days start to shorten, those bass start to make that fall transition. As those days start to lengthen, those bass start to make those spring transitions. As the grass starts to grow, and that's a tool for those bass to use to ambush predators and for them to get out of the sun, that's a tool that they start to use. A bass can't blink like we can. They don't have an eyelid, so they have to put themselves in a place where the, their eyes are shaded from the sun. And what is is driving that movement is the sun itself being shown on the face of the earth and shown onto your lake. That's truly why I believe that on cloudier days the bass eat better. Now there's a factor of barometric pressure and there's a factor of weather which are both driven by the sun that all play into that but at the end of the day it's the amount of light exposure that those bass are getting that is driving what those bass are doing in their day-to-day -day lives and is really a determining factor in the kind of bottom composition that the bass are orienting to as well as how the bass are using things like current to their advantage it all has to do with the sun again i'm going to go back to my example of the other day with the schooling fish they were sitting under a shade line that was being thrown onto the water by a tree line that hadn't been there before because the sun was literally lower in the sky because the earth is starting to tilt away from the sun and we're starting to go into the fall transition and those bass were using that shade but just as soon as the sun got high enough into the sky that the light started to hit that area those bass moved out of that area moved up into a shadier spot up under a tree and i had to follow those fish there to get them to bite huge factor there. So not only were they relating to a bottom composition, not only were they relating to current, but the biggest driving factor there was the sun. So that's three things I think every angler misses. If there's one that you think I've missed, please let me know down in the comments. I would love to know it. I just, those are some of my thought processes on bass fishing. You know, there's just certain things that you can't really like show an on the water tutorial on how or why certain things happen you just got to kind of talk about them so that's what this was but as always guys thank you for watching questions or comments you know where to go leave them also go down in the description check out all the links i got down there i got like coupon codes and all that kind of stuff so go use those but as always you guys are sweet thank you for watching